So these are the floating shelves I just made entirely out of plywood. Let me show you how I made them. The first step in the process is to install the wall hardware. I'm using these metal wall brackets that I got off of Amazon. I'll leave a link down below to the ones that I ended up using. The reason I'm installing the wall brackets first is so that I can build the shelves to fit the brackets instead of trying to fit the bracket to the shelf. It'll be a lot easier for me to manipulate the shelf holes than to try and manipulate where the bracket is located on the wall. I was able to keep the spacing between all of my shelf brackets exactly the same, so my shelves ended up being interchangeable between all three locations. But depending on how accurate you install the brackets, each shelf may not fit at any given spot. And if you decide to do this project, I would highly advise screwing these brackets into a stud. I didn't have any studs where I needed them, so I ended up using these toggle bolts. These work really well because you can insert the threaded piece into the wall without using the screw, unlike the traditional spring-loaded style. There's a little bit of play in the bolts, so I just shifted them up or down to make sure that I had the brackets perfectly level. So when it comes to planning this stuff out, I always just like to use pen and paper, or pencil and paper. Uh, it's easiest for me to gauge what I'm doing, and I like to use it to do my material list and figure out the most efficient way for me to cut a sheet of plywood. And each shelf is gonna be made up of three separate pieces that are glued together, and the middle piece is going to be notched so that it'll accept the wall brackets. So for three shelves with three pieces, I need nine pieces that are nine inches by 32 inches. And I want the grain to run laterally in the shelf. So I can cut the sheet of plywood like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, and then I'm left with a weird stair step scrap. Or I can cut down this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, a whole sheet is 96 inches, and 96 divided by 3 is 32. So if I deduct the blade from that, I can make the shelves just a little bit smaller than 32 inches wide, but it'll be the most efficient way for me to use this sheet of plywood without having any waste. I first cut the sheet a little bigger than 27 inches, and then I cut that into 9 inch strips. I set my stop lock at 31 and 7 eighths and then cut out the nine equal pieces. It's important that you sort through the pieces that you have to make sure that you have a good face on the top and the bottom of the shelf. Baltic Birch can have a lot of these little plugs, so you want to make sure you avoid putting these on a show face. I'm going to be cutting slots in the plywood to accept the brackets. Now, the brackets I installed on the wall ended up being 18 and an eighth inches apart. So, from inside edge to inside edge, it was 18 and an eighth. So I need to find the middle of this board, which is just under 16 inches, and then I can mark either side 9 and a sixteenth over from the middle. So the way I'm going to be cutting this is on the miter saw, and I'm going to set up stop blocks so I'll be able to cut one side of every piece and then I'll adjust it to cut the other side um, to accept the thickness of this here which is a half inch. Once I set the stop block to cut out this line here, I'll shift the stop block to cut out the other line here and I'll run them all through so they're all exactly the same in the exact same location. A word of advice, cut the slots an inch or two longer than the metal bracket. The slots I cut were almost the exact size, and they ended up getting clogged with sawdust that I had a really hard time trying to remove. I also was pretty exact with the width of my slots, but in hindsight, I could have cut the slots a little wider to give me some more lateral wiggle room when installing them on the wall. Once the shelf is caulked to the wall, it really isn't going to go anywhere. To finish off the cut, I used a jigsaw and then chiseled from both ends to snap off the waste. You could just use a handsaw if you don't have a jigsaw, or you could also just cut the slots a few inches longer and snap off the middle piece. It would be a little rough, but as long as the bracket fully seats, you should be fine. 
I used some spring clamps to hold the three shelf pieces together so I could test fit it on the wall. And it seemed to fit good on all three locations, so I was good to continue on to the glue up. I sanded all the glue surfaces with 150 grit sandpaper just to get rid of any rough edges or debris to ensure a good bond between all the pieces. I only temporarily clamped the pieces in place and then I stacked all three shelves together to minimize the amount of clamps I would need. I made sure I didn't have any glue touching between the shelves, otherwise they would stick together and I would have had a big mess on my hands. I threw some weight on top, but if you have more clamps I would definitely use those. You especially want to make sure that you're squeezing the front edge of the shelves. You don't want there to be any gaps between any of the three pieces. The following day I made this little sled that has a straight piece of lumber attached to the side. This is what I'll use to run the shelf through the table saw. I didn't want to just run the shelf through on its own because the glue squeeze out would prevent any of the sides from being straight. Once I trim one side, I can just flip it over and run it through again without using the sled. Then I trim them nice and square at the miter saw. Since the flange of my brackets protrudes from the wall, I needed to rat out the back so the shelf will sit flush against the wall. This is the most sketch part of the project, for me at least. I freehand cut these because I didn't have an edge guide and I really didn't feel like setting up some complex jig. One of the sides ended up being paper thin and you gotta be really sure that you don't route right through the edge. Here are the finished slots. You can sort of see how close I had to get to the edge there. I cut through all but pretty much the top veneer. These shelves are going in a kid's room, so I need to make sure there aren't any sharp corners or edges. I routed the corners of the shelves using a half inch rounder bit, and I clamped these two blocks to either side to help prevent the router from blowing out of the edge. For the edges, I just gave them a quarter inch round over. I then sanded everything nice and smooth with 150 and then 220 grit sandpaper on my Orbil sander. I made sure to hit the corners really well to get rid of any burn marks left by the router. So I just finished sanding these. Um, they were, this ply was relatively smooth to begin with, so I did 150 and then 220 and that was it. Um, now I'm going to be vacuuming all the dust off, wiping them with mineral, mineral spirits, and then we can begin finishing. And I'm using this Osmo Pollux oil again. I used this for the bed frame that I made, um, and I like the way that it came out. It's really easy to apply, so that's what I'll be using today. I hit the shelves with some compressed air and then vacuumed away all of the dust. I also wiped them down with mineral spirits to make sure there wasn't any dust left. The good thing about this Pollux oil, though, is that even with dust, the finish will still turn out great. So you don't have to be too anal about it. The way I apply this finish is by using a white Scotch-Brite pad. I've seen people use multi multiple different grits, but i found that just using the white works fine. I dip the pad into the oil and then rub it over the entire surface in a circular motion, being sure to really scrub it in deep. Now you aren't trying to saturate the wood, because once you have everything fully covered, you're going to be immediately wiping it off until it's dry to the touch. I then let it dry for at least 8 hours and repeat the process one more time. If you're really diligent about wiping the surface dry, then you'll be left with a nice smooth finish after the second coat. But if you do have some areas that didn't get wiped as well, then it can leave the wood feeling a little gritty to the touch. So what I like to do after the second coat dries is take a new white pad and scrub the entire surface. This will buff out any rough spots and leave the wood feeling super smooth. I'm going to be caulking these shelves to the wall to hide any of the gaps. This will be a lot easier than trying to scribe them. So I put the tape about less than a sixteenth from the edge. Um, I don't want to put it too far in because I don't want a lot of um, caulk buildup on this because if I ever have to move these shelves, I don't want to have a hard time trying to remove the caulking. If any does get stuck, it's such a small amount that it'll be easy enough to just sand off in the future. So. I added a few beads of caulk to the edge to help it stick to the wall.
I have white walls, so I was able to use white caulk. If your walls aren't white, you may have to come in later and paint the caulking to match, or you can just try using a clear. I'm not sure if it would work or not, but it's worth a try. And here is the final product. I think these turned out great, and they matched the room really well. This was a relatively easy project, and pretty affordable because it only uses one sheet of plywood. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.